Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you a plant called Drosera pygmaea. This is the all green form from New Zealand and I've done a little bit of reading up online and apparently this is a slightly rarer form that grows naturally in the uh, volcanic plateaus up in North Island, New Zealand. And I have a hunch that these plants have something more to offer us than meets the eye and it has got something to do with their snap tentacles. I'm not going to say exactly what just yet because I just have a hunch and it'll be too early to call any kind of conclusion and I don't want to jump the gun here on anything so before I before I uh, continue, uh, let me just show you uh, how many of these plants I have here. Um, these are uh, some plants I received from Apple Blossom. And uh, initially there were about 20 plants, but now it has diminished up to like, well, there's three in this pot. Maybe you could consider that seedling there if it might survive. The fourth one. Uh, then. Over here in another pot we have two more and these ones just broke out of dormancy. Okay, and yeah just to give you a better picture we have Drosera Bermania here which I'm going to be conducting some tests on later. Another form, of, uh, no sorry this is not another form, this is the same plant, uh, just a slightly younger Drosera Bermania it's growing in a different medium. And then over there we have Drosera Bermania hum to do. So, yeah, some of you might already have a hunch on what I am going to be testing here. Uh, so, yeah, let me get the angle just right. I'm actually balancing the uh, camera on my. Uh, using my hand and against the. Uh, against the aluminium trays. So, let's see if we can get a good shot of this. Um, it's difficult to work with one hand and since I've only got a small number of plants that I can actually work with, see I don't even know where I'm going. Yes, as I was saying, since I only have a small number of plants to work with, I have to be really really careful and not to stress them out too much. I don't want any of my specimens dying and yeah, well Gee, I can't even see where I'm going if I'm just, you know, looking at it like that. But let me just try and trigger one of these hairs. See if it goes up. Down. Forget about that. Let's just use these. doesn't work on that one. Well, that's strange. See, yesterday I made an observation and I definitely saw one of these marginal hairs, or as they are better known now, snap tentacles or ribbon tentacles, it folded up in just a fraction of a second when it was touched like that, exactly like I'm doing now. See? Well, I think that one just folded, but it was not as fast as the one I observed yesterday. Definitely not as fast. So there, as you can see, it works sometimes, though on a highly inconsistent level. I suppose not as consistent as the glandulicera, but then again, these plants aren't really known to exhibit such behavior. Hold on, where is my... Yeah, there it is again. So, let me just continue tapping on these. If 
I can ever so slightly touch it. Oh, I see what's going on. This one's already been fed, has it? I, I think I fed this one yesterday when I saw the tentacles moving up and down. Did that just move? That one. Did it just move? I'll have to go back and rewatch, rewatch this film and find out. Hold on, let me give the pot a little rotate and see if I can get other leaves to respond. So we have a few marginal tentacles here. Uh, these are the larger plants of my collection. I actually tested. Uh, yeah, I actually made the observation yesterday on the smaller plants, which I'll be showing you shortly. So it appears that the larger plants take a lot more stimuli to respond and in most cases they don't respond much at all. As you can see none of the tentacles are folding up which is probably why it was so difficult to observe in the first place. It is still difficult to observe now, don't get me wrong, but it's these little uh, hairs at the side that respond. Okay, I guess this one doesn't really work. Hmm, interesting. Which means to say it's not... So, excuse me, moving the table. There we go. Which means to say these plants only respond uh, given the correct circumstances, the absolutely correct circumstances. Um, I don't know what these circumstances are yet, but we'll definitely get to them. These plants are smaller and these are going to be a little bit harder to film. Let's see if I can get an angle right. Oops. Come on. I don't even know if I'm touching it. I guess so. I think I played with them too much yesterday. So they aren't giving me any cooperation today. Stressed them out too much already yesterday. Come on. Hmm. Want to be a really really gentle you know it would be amazing if I actually get this down on film the first time I try it but I doubt it's going to be that simple if it was then everyone everyone should be able to do it already but no, it seems like they only fold up when the conditions are just right. Like yesterday's. I did something right yesterday. And, the, and these hairs just folded up like that. Did you see that? Did that just fold up? Uh, okay, I'll definitely have to watch the, the, the video again. I could be tripping, I don't know, I'm really excited and if these plants are doing what I think they are doing then it would be huge because I don't think, at least to my knowledge I don't think anyone else has made a similar observation of Drosera pygmaea behaving such come on, let me try and get this one to do it as well again, it's inconsistent Oddly enough, yesterday it was really, really consistent, right before I poured the water. Right. Oh, yeah, right before I watered the plants. That could be another factor. As you can see, the water level in the background is quite high. It's only like uh, 
one and one and a half inches away from the plants itself, from the plants themselves. So this could be a factor. Um, the the uh, water level was much lower yesterday. In fact, it was zero. That's why I decided to water them and and then I played with the plants. And then it happened. It moved very very rapidly. Let me try and you know keep keep on doing this. Gosh, it's going to be a long video, and I'm sure there are many more. Uh, excuse me. There are going to be many more videos to come. Yeah, poor plants. I'm going to be pestering them a lot, a lot now. <laughs> oh dear. Richard, if any of these plants die, it's going to be your fault, okay? <laughs> Can you live with that? I'm poking these plants for you. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> Look, I'm as excited as you if what I told you. See that? Did you see that? I swear that happened. I, I, I couldn't have been eating too many mushrooms. I grow them, by the way. But I... Yeah! Um... So... So, Richard, yeah, as I was saying... If it is, uh, if these plants are reacting, are behaving like the way I told you they are behaving, then I think it would be a pretty major discovery for the three of us. And by three, I mean Ross, that includes you, because these plants, uh, yeah, these plants are from you. And I think if anybody has the uh, better opportunity to film the plants, these plants themselves, in their natural habitat, it'll definitely be Ross. Um, come on. Come on. Do that again. There must be something I'm doing right. It, it's either their growing environment like water level, temperature, etc, etc or it could be the stimuli that I'm using maybe they aren't really responsive to these kinds of tips I remember yesterday I was using uh, this this thingy right here and it worked out much better let's see if I can do it again no well, then I guess not more testing has to be done as with all scientific methods trial and error and experimentation are definitely the way to go about these things and like I said I don't want to be poking and prodding at my plants too much until they they uh, give up their ghost yeah, definitely don't want to be doing that as you can see I've already got very limited samples um, Okay, so we have a couple of good shots here, and I'm going to be re-watching them on my computer before I make any sorts of further comments on these. I wouldn't say conclusions, because we are far, far away from those. And anyway, yeah, would you guys like to see a little bit more of my setup? Um, well, that's Drosera EndNotes, another, uh, another Pygmy Drosera. Uh, we have Drosera Burmania, which I placed here conveniently. These are Drosera Burmania Hum to Do, which I placed here conveniently to do further experiments. And as you can see, their snap tentacles all primed and ready to go. This Drosera Burmania Hong Kong Red is spectacular. Look at the snap tentacles, the ribbon tentacles. They're stretching out in all directions, and I bet these are going to be really easy to, to prompt much easier than the than the plant in question really um, these are the once mistaken the uh, Drosera falconarii or falconary seedlings which turned out to be Burmani Hong Kong red as well and I have placed them here because I am going to be testing their snap tentacles as well in relation to these plants Alright guys, I think this video has gone on long enough. I am going to view the clips which I've shot and I'm going to share them with you guys online. 
and yeah we'll see where that leads us from there and just as a side note let me take a temperature reading uh, the air conditioning was on here in the arboretum for a while now and the temperature is about 27 to 28 yeah 27 and a half to 28 degrees Celsius uh, I don't use Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sure lots of folks out there do but anyway okay so what have we learned from this video we've learned that balancing the camera on my hand against the, uh, the, the, the aluminium tray, the water tray here actually works uh, I've tried better methods of uh, balancing but they all seem to seem to fail and um, angling my camera precariously over the growing uh, the growing setup isn't such a wise idea alright I'll stop the rant here and uh, I'll see you guys next time